Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. You are about to listen to the dark forest. Let's give you the info about it. First of all, you know the websites. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner, jackiecation.com has everything. All of my podcasts, including uh, videos of my stand-up, my stand-up schedule, merchandise you can purchase if you would like, and a lot more info than you possibly even need. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg sang and produced and composed that song at the beginning of the show. He sang with his wife, Sarah. It's very beautiful. At the end of the program, he sings his version of the Mexican hat dance. That's Mike Rickberg. Vilmos fixes JackieCation.com. He is uh, the web designer over there. And Patrick Brady fixes the audio. And in this case, there's a video intro. Very exciting. Anyway, those are the websites. If you want to support the show, you're doing it already by listening to it or watching it. And another way is to tell your friends and family, go on iTunes, do a review. Another way is to just give me money. Yeah. You could use the donate button. You can make it even monthly if you're okay with making things monthly. You do a PayPal monthly. There's a monthly choice on PayPal. The PayPal is a button on the Jackie Cation or the Dork Forest website, and it goes directly to me. Thank you very much. I will use it wisely or foolishly. Your call as well. Now, my email address, Jackie at JackieCation.com, is where you can contact me if you have any questions or concerns and about the Dork Forest. And I do have a Venmo account. It's Jackie hyphen Cation, oddly enough. Another way to support the show is on DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. There's an Amazon link. And the Amazon link just takes you to Amazon. You order like normal, and it supports the show because you came from Jackie Cation or DorkForest.com. Very exciting. Other than that, oh, there are there is a band camp. You can if you have listened to all the episodes that are free and you need more content, there are several live episodes that are at the dorkforest.bandcamp.com. And those cost me a couple of bucks, so I charge a couple of bucks. There's also a storytelling album there that you can listen to some stories that I did live. And there are 17 free episodes before The Dork Forest was pre-recorded. So the audio isn't very good, but the guests were super funny and fun and dorky. So if you want to do that, go to the thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. Other than that, let's see if there are other things that I should be talking about. Possibly uh, the merch. Yeah, if you want to buy merch. The only other thing I want to talk about is the merch. You can get Dork Forest t-shirts uh, and you can get stand-up comedy t-shirts. You can get my albums or my DVD over at JackieCation.com slash merch. There's pins, there's a challenge coin, there's a bunch of new things happening over there. Anyway, a lot of information. I think, I don't think I've missed anything, but who cares? Let's get into the show. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation, and I'm sitting in a tiny room at my house. Where are you sitting, Pamela Walt? I'm in my bedroom. All right. Also, yeah. another small room in a different place that isn't my home. That's right, because we're still doing dork forests from Jafar, from afar. And uh, I'm with Pamela Walt, very funny stand-up comic. You should go to at House of Pamcakes, get it? P-A-M-C-A-K-E-S. <laughs> house of Pamcakes Pam on Twitter. And... What what is the what's your new Instagram? The new Instagram is Pam dot um, <laughs> and the old Insta. Someone already took Pam Demick, which was upsetting. But the old Instagram is at House of Pamcakes, and okay, um, so yeah. I think we get the impression that you are a goof, <laughs> a silly, silly goose, and I am happy to be any part of your life, uh, Pamela Walt. So. Uh, but we're here in the Dork Forest, and the first thing I kind of, since we've already brought it up, that one of your dorkdoms you put down was Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A movie I watch every year. Oh, yeah. Uh, right around Groundhog Day. It's it's the last movie I watch when I'm watching all of my Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. I uh, Oh, you watch I it at Christmas. 
yeah, I watch. Well, I give myself to 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 February to watch all of my Christmas movies, just in case uh, I get bogged down in Christmas things and don't oh. get to. So, do you watch it a fair amount, or? Yeah, there was a period. Actually, it was around Christmas time where I watched it every day. <laughs> Sometimes more really? than once a day. <laughs> I tend to do that. Like I find one thing I really like and I watch it over and over again until I can't see it. It's your inner toddler. It. Well yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That sounds awesome. What, um, let's tell people about it. What year did it come out? Do you remember? Oh, you know, I don't know. Me neither. I feel like it was in the nineties. Nineties. <laughs> right. Was it 80? Let's look at, should we look it up or is that? Well, I mean, you can look it up. We have the time. Okay. It's uh, what's interesting about it. It's so it's with Bill Murray and um, who Andy who McDowell. Was, that's right, Andy McDowell. Oh, I put um, Groundhog Dog Day. <laughs> Groundhog Dog Day. The Dog Days of Groundhog. The, the sequel. Uh, <laughs> wow, how did I do that? Groundhog There's a musical. Day. Did you see that? No. When is that? that they that one's on Broadway. There was a Whoa. Groundhog Day the musical. Wow, that's I know amazing. Then all that's left is on ice. I don't know if I could handle it without Bill Murray, though. Oh, right. There's re- yeah. they've, Obviously, there's been recasting. Yeah. Uh, is Bill Murray... You know, it's interesting, because I always thought... I like. I don't mind Bill Murray. Uh, yeah. I just think that Bill Murray... There has to be... There's other people who could play that part. He plays a real tool bag. Yeah. And it's interesting... It's interesting in this Me Too kind of time, Pamela Walt, yes. um, where we're like, what is that guy doing? I mean, mm. it's, I mean, clearly, I, I, I read an article once that uh, the guy who directed it, Harold Ramis, any idea? Uh, Harold Ramis, that's yeah. right, said that uh, somebody asked him how many days did I think, did he think Bill Murray lived that day over and over again? Yeah. And he said it was 10,000. Yeah. I also, I thought I read somewhere 10 years. Like I read different uh, theories on the amount of time that oh, wow. the time loop was supposed to be happening over. Oh, interesting. That, yeah. Um, because it like, I know it's hard to learn something, but boy, that's a, that's 10, <laughs> that's a long loop. How long do you think it would take you to get that good at piano? Uh, oh, right. Or, or ice, ice sculpting. sculpting. <laughs> Or to care about French poetry. I mean, there's so many. I have to tell you that I have re- recently, not long ago, I got an email from Duolingo. And it said, Duolingo, you made Duolingo sad. Because I haven't been. My Groundhog Day in this sort of quarantine time is not, it might take me 10 years. Is it, Wait, is that an app, Duolingo? Yeah, it's an app to learn a new language. God, apps are shaming us now. Yeah, we're shaming. <laughs> That's the last thing we need. Right. Like, what did he learn, right? What, what do you yeah. think? So Bill Murray's the, the lead. Andy McDowell is. And then uh, the comic, the, the comic actor. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Bo- his name? Bob's son. I'm 100 years old. Oh, I uh, forgot. Bob Elliott's son. Chris Elliott. Chris Elliott. There we Wait. go. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, Chris Elliott. Yeah, yeah. And so those are the three main characters, right? Um, Well, yeah. There's that, um, you know, Ned Ned Ryerson. Ned the head? Ned (laughs) Ryerson? Sure. But, I mean, he's kind of stuck in, yeah, just the same thing. Yes. I suppose Bill Murray's the only one who has any sort of agency. Yeah. Right? He's the only one that changes. Yeah. What what do you love about it? Like, let's take me through the movie. Like, what how, I, I I can't remember. How does it start? Um, it, yeah. <laughs> gosh, you know, I haven't watched it in like a year, so now I have to try to remember. It opens oh, uh, in the newsroom, doesn't it? Sure. And they're going, and then they're driving to to go to Puck Satani. Yeah. Something. Like he, he, he's in the, uh, he's in the newsroom and he sees her for the first time. Um, and do you think they'd never worked before? Like this was the first time he met her? Yeah. So that, I think that's supposed to be what actually happens. Um, okay. Yeah. 
because then later he references it and says the first time I saw you I can't remember the exact line but like I knew I was in love with you or whatever but then then I went back and watched that part and I was like eh, his reaction doesn't really seem like he fell in love with her when well his love her, seems but... a little toxic yeah it's <laughs> true <laughs> yeah but so he I mean and he's the kind of guy who thinks he's super funny right mm-hmm He's just, he's that, he's that riffing kind of, you know, hey, I'm being this guy. And, um, and he doesn't want to go, he doesn't want to go to this little town because he's been before, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he hates it and it's boring. Um, (laughs) he's a sociopath. He's a sociopath at the beginning. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think he, and, and it's. I mean, granted, many, many romantic comedies are essentially stalker does, you know, makes good. Yeah. Right. Where because he's he's literally he's learning what kind of ice cream she likes and how to make a perfect day for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very and manipulative. <laughs> it's, yeah. It feels it feels, it feels super manipulative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. um but I, but I have to say that that I have recently been watching a lot of old ro- romantic comedies, and Andy Ashcraft, my fella, has been like, "This is supposed to be romantic." Yeah. And then other times he's like, "This is supposed to be a comedy." Yeah. So like well, like the old Cary Grant, Rosalind Russell. Yes. His girl Friday, I think. Yeah. And, oh, I I love that movie too. Yeah, they're all creepy, and I love them, but. <laughs> They're yeah, me creepy. too. <laughs> Why do we love them? That's so interesting. Yeah, I I've been thinking about that a lot because I wow, this like all ties into all of the topics that I brought up. Kind right, of. right. Oh, that's right. Because uh, <laughs> Cary Grant and old movies are on that one, as well as yeah, like the uh, um, amateur psychology and the filmmaking, and like I really, <laughs> I've really been thinking a lot. Um, weirdly I watched Groundhog Day a lot when I was kind of in a toxic situation and um and uh I just got into filmmaking recently and I've been thinking about like how unrealistic movies are and how they romance is usually like a really crazy situation that is really unhealthy and so I've been trying to write like feminist romances where it doesn't have like the Hollywood happy ending like like all of those movies did but then does it feel as good I don't know but (laughs) well I don't know I mean like what are your what what previously were your sort of favorite old films like that the old romantic films there's His Girl Friday Mm -hmm. oh Cary Um, Grant I love that the one Holiday with Katherine Hepburn have you seen that one which how wait that was was that Katherine Hepburn or Audrey Hepburn Catherine Hepburn. Oh wait, yeah. Holiday with Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn. Yeah, and it's kind that's of. That's one of. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, that's that's one of my very favorite movies. Uh, a lot of people don't know about that one because it's 1938, 1939, and it's and it's buried among sort of Gone with the Wind mm-hmm. and a lot of sort of epic, super creepy. By the way, Gone with the Wind is Gone with the <laughs> horrifying. Gone with the Wind. He takes care of himself at the end. Right? <laughs> it's i can't even remember how that ends i only watched it one time and i was mortified um (laughs) yeah it's not a good portrayal yeah it's it's, literally it should just be called bitches man what are you gonna do there's and um there's like no the thing with that one is there's no like character arc like are they better people at the end they still seem pretty i think they're both crazy yeah i mean i don't know There's all kinds of weird romantic comedies like Julie. Andy referenced uh, Julie and Julia the other day. Do you remember that one about Um, Julia Child and the woman who wrote the book about Julia Child? Oh, I don't think I've seen that one. Well, it's not good. It's not bad, but it's I mean, it's nothing to write home about. But um, what did you because I thought Holiday actually had a pretty healthy. That one had one of the healthiest kind of relationships. That one made more sense. Then bringing a baby, for example. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that one, too. Um, well, I guess it's the fact that he's, like, in Holiday, he's engaged to the sister. And then, you know, it's, it's it, their relationship isn't very healthy. And he keeps going back to her. 
and then ends up with the other sister. But he also, like, she kind of chases after him. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's not the worst one. Any no, means, I thought I thought I think that Holiday is actually super sane in the way yeah. that he falls for people like you do, right? Mm. Where you meet somebody in and especially in movies where you have this and that maybe that was the whole thing about Holiday where it has that instantaneous I'm in love mm. and you're like we're engaged. We've known each other for a week and a half and then they're engaged, they get back to the real world. And then his, uh, Cary Grant's friends, the character actors who have been in everything, Mm -hmm. are the greatest sort of sanity barometer. Right. Who are like, what happened? And then Catherine Hepburn is just someone with not great self-esteem, but is in that same world as her sister and doesn't really understand that she's not, you know, that it's all so toxic, you know? Yeah. And... So I think the idea that the idea of holiday is that you fall in love with somebody immediately and then and then you're wrong. Mm, and right. so it is kind of a, a, a kind of a genuine romantic comedy in the way that you're like, oh, these are this feels more real, except for that everybody's fabulously wealthy. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is really true. It is. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Bringing I think about bringing up baby a lot because that is a train wreck of a romance <laughs> so crazy yeah and there's there's that one line at the end of it where Catherine Hepburn is like I know that I'm that I I'm overwhelmed because that because essentially that one is the situation where she falls in love with him instantaneously mm-hmm. and then it's just like Veruca Salt I have to have that guy yeah and then chases after and so there's some implication at the end of it of how nuts she is. Mm-hmm. But she's nuts. Yeah, she's nuts. <laughs> and she's not giving him all the information. No. Like, he's he's sort of working with half. The bringing a baby is, is kind of crazy. That's the one with the, the tiger or something. Yeah, right? or the, yeah, yeah. There's a tiger. Um, is, that's not the one. Now I'm getting him confused. Is it, there's well, just talk about any movie at all. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> Tell me the plot of any any movie that you really like. I love. I love how um, I'm like in my like peak social social <laughs> awkwardness quarantine mode. I had a dream last night that I got back to stand up and um, and I took it was a wireless mic and I took it in the green room and did my set from there because I was too uncomfortable being on stage. <laughs> I need there to be at least 30 feet between me and you. I need to be in a separate room talking to you. Anyway, um, yeah, peak social aw- awkwardness. Um, no, there's one where, like, they, like, is it Catherine Hepburn, where they break up and uh, she, no, it's Barbara Stanwyck, who I also love, I can't remember the name of it, though, but, like, she's in love with this guy. It doesn't work out. So she pretends to be another woman who just happens to look exactly like her and makes him fall in love with her. And then, surprise, he finds out it's her all along. Um, What? That's (laughs) ridiculous. That sounds like one of those uh, – that sounds like pillow talk. A Barbara Stanwyck? Yeah, I think it was – it definitely was Barbara Stanwyck, I think. And who was the guy? I can't remember who the guy was. Um, gosh, I have to look it up. Be, I'm so sorry. I can't remember names. But yeah, it was really like, God, those movies were not uh, not a good look for women. It's really. I don't know. It wasn't a good look for like when I think about those um, Rock Hudson Doris Day movies. Mm-hmm. That's not a good look for men. Mm. Like that, I mean, Rock Hudson, I think I showed, um, uh, there's lover come back and, um, pillow talk to Andy. And Andy was like, that guy is the biggest tool in the world. <laughs> he's just completely lied to her and said that he's a cowboy and that, uh, he's fabulously wealthy and, you know, all these things are going to be taken care of. It wasn't Christmas in Connecticut, was it? Does she do that? Barbara in that Stanley, one? Where I think uh, is that the one where she pretends to be 
she can cook and clean like a like a woman oh, an otter. Yeah, that's the one that she does that, but it, it, it's a different one than that. Um, but okay. yeah, she does do she does do that in that one. Too. She's supposed to be some sort of chef, and uh, and she yeah. writes for a magazine or something. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, there's a lot of but like there's there's something about the romantic comedy movie genre mm-hmm. that involves so much trickery. Yeah. What, what, I don't know what I like about it. I, but I, I consistently do. Yeah. Like I, I've, I've watched all of those movies from when I was little. Yeah. I think about that and I think, God, I wonder, um, I wonder what we would, we would all be like if we watched, uh, media that was he- like healthy relationships. And would we even want to watch it, would it be so boring? Like, is it the chaos that we love? Well, to yeah, watch? what are you. <laughs> And then we just like you try to write. How would you write that? I mean, I know that I'm in a healthy relationship and there is no trickery. There was it was incredibly it was part of the problem I had with actually dating is because I couldn't I didn't want to play any games, even though I watched all of those movies and I read romance novels. Oh, really? And romance novels are full of misunderstandings. But then 120 <laughs> pages later, you're like, oh, if I had just told you this, then we could have then got to know each other better and fallen in love. And instead, we've been fighting for 120 pages. And then the big reveal, and then we're like, oh, but we do love each other. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> so- <laughs> I now like cringe at those endings, though. Like the everything works out and they're in love and happily ever after. And I don't know what I just. And y- and yet you like those old movies, right? Yeah. 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 Well, now so I, you- I don't know. I haven't gone back and watched them in the recent past. But I think like um, I, th- I don't know if I started understanding on a deeper, deeper level, like ha- just how toxic and manipulative it all was and now maybe I won't enjoy it as much um yeah because I I think that I mean a lot of those movies except seriously Holiday is the one that comes to mind where it wasn't everybody it was just an honest mistake you know somebody fell Mm -hmm. in love with someone who was actually a jackass Mm -hmm. and then the whole movie is about how that that's the realization right like oh you're a piece of work I actually can't possibly you know, the last episode was with my buddy Jim Wooster of the Dork Forest, and he wrote a sketch one time about being in his 30s at a party, and a woman came up to him, and I think it was based in real life, is uh, she came up to him and said, and they were talking, and he thought she was very pretty and interesting, and then um, she said something weird, and he kind of backed up a little bit, and she goes, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a lot of work, I'm crazy. And he said, well, it's been really nice meeting you. And then he left. (laughs) He was like, I don't have time. I don't want to, I don't want to fix anybody. Yeah. Because you can't, right? You can't. Like, uh, yeah, that's a problem I run into a lot. Um, And I thought I hit my threshold years ago. And apparently there was another threshold to hit. You could move the goal (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> definitely did that and then um you know recently I realized like it is so hard to change yourself imagine trying to change somebody change somebody yeah. else like yes oh my yeah. god yeah so true like I think so I true. I mean I always think that like I do that thing and I think that's human nature where you like project yourself onto other people. So you think like, Oh, I, I know that I'm this person and I know I have empathy and you just kind of assume that about everybody. And like the older I get, I think maybe that's why I'm having a harder time with the movies now. Cause I'm starting to really understand things I probably should have understood when I was like 15. <laughs> well, except for, that I mean that's the craziest thing is is when you because I, I you know as I grow up and I'm still growing up right and um I realize that first of all I have to relearn things that I thought I knew and there's sometimes a whole new depth to them there's a Pamela Walt there's an umami to my life man 
<laughs> where there's just another flavor that's un you, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I can't um and so I think we all have to relearn the same lessons over and over again. But to practice the smart thing to do, right? Is to, you know, the, the smart things where you let somebody like you, where you um don't let somebody be mean to you, which are two very separate things. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people learn, oh, I'm not going to let people be mean to me. What they don't learn is how to let somebody be nice to them. Right. And where's that romantic comedy? I huh? know. I want to see <laughs> that. <laughs> I want to make that. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean... uh, right, because the thing is, 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 is I, I consistently, and it never really works. And it absolutely never worked out. But I would fall for uh, these guys that were not nice to me. But they were smart. They were super smart. Or they were super funny. Or they were really good looking. Or they were, I don't know, tall. There was something <laughs> happening. I don't know what it was. They but said hello. <laughs> right. They were willing to talk to me. <laughs> there, was some, there was something about them that I liked. Yeah. But it was just a small part of them. Yeah. And the bigger part of them didn't like me enough to be nice to me and weren't a lot of them they weren't mean like mean mean but they didn't like I mean the key thing there is they didn't like me enough to want anything that I wanted with them. Mm. And so to to learn that was like the biggest the biggest romantic lesson. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I mean, there's that. But then there's also like people who straight up have personality disorders, which I had to learn a lot about that. And then um, that's a really tricky one, because like, here's a person you think is so great. But the, again, that's like one aspect of them. And um and then you kind of like project the rest and and you go on this fantasy of who you think they are and you're holding on to the good moments and realizing like, oh, this is kind of strange. And like if you're like me, you start to blame yourself for their weird behaviors. And then you finally have to realize like, oh, this is a person with strange behaviors and I don't have to take that on. It's it, This is all, I mean, this all relates to Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's like learning <laughs> the lessons over and over and over. And like one lesson that I thought I learned before, like, okay, well, this this about romance and whatever. And then, you know, year, years, years later to have to like understand like, oh, all that stuff that I blamed myself for is not always necessarily me, you know? Something like that. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, the only part that you had in some, in th that anyone has that like, if like the part that I can take responsibility for is sort of like one of those 50, 50 car accidents, right? Yeah. My car was there. So I was in the room. Right. And the only way that I can, can get out of this, but there's, yeah. And a lot of those romance movies and, and novels have this whole thing where they convince where one of the characters, like, and it's usually the bad guy, if or, because or there's an arc where the good person learns that they're doing this, mm -hmm. where where if you're in a relationship with somebody and you convince the other person that they're crazy, yeah, yeah, Gas, like gaslight, like the movie Gaslight. Right, I guess it's, a, yeah, I guess that's the definition of gaslighting. A movie I've never seen, by the way, Robert Mitchum. I haven't Mitchum. either. Um, <laughs> oh, I like yeah, Robert Mitchum. That's where though. the word, <laughs> yeah, and that's where the term comes from. Yeah. And, um, but the, yeah, but it's sort of like, and, and people, I mean, people of all genders do it to an opposite, you know, to, to their partner, right? Mm -hmm. there, there are bad people of all, there, there are crazy people or people who, and crazy, of course, that's a bad connotation on it, but there is an insanity to creating the image that you're not, that I think I'm crazy because you're blowing hot and cold on me. Right. Mm -hmm. And because I mean, that's a common, but I don't think, think that, is that a common trope in, in movies and books though? Mm -hmm. In romances, I haven't seen it. 
Yeah. That would be more of a drama. That would be a romantic drama that would not be a romantic comedy. Well, that's why <laughs> I'm, I'm making this short and it kind of, it is that. Um, and there is comedy, but it's also, I guess it's a dramedy. Yeah. A dark dramedy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause are I, are there vampires? There are going to be now. <laughs> <laughs> And do some reshoots. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it, that is something I the really want to see. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think we need more of that. I think, I, like, I want to see things that mirror life more in movies. Um, you know, they're they're. I mean, that's not to say that mo- there aren't movies that do that, but like in that particular area in romance, I guess. Yeah. And I haven't seen, I mean, this might be something that's done in romantic dramas or romantic dramedies. And I don't watch any dramas, uh, mostly because I feel like the inside of my head is so dramatic yeah. that I can't watch drama. I'm like, I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm already dealing with my own fears, so I can't watch scary movies. Some people Same. process it. Some people process their fear by watching scary movies, which I think is interesting. Mm. And I, I, um, I have to fix my hair. Um, the, uh, <laughs> but one of the, one of the, somebody told me that, uh, they have a friend who is very, very literal. And what she likes about horror movies, for example, is that you go in knowing we're here to scare you. And she's like, okay, I am ready to be scared. And then she goes in, she is scared because she has seen a scary movie. And then she leaves knowing that that was a movie that is not real, but it was kind of an interesting adrenaline rush, like going on a ride. Mm. I have never had that. I don't want that. Mm -mm. (laughs) Uh, I will go on a, I'll go on a roller coaster knowing that I'm going to kind of be scared, but I don't know what I want out of a roller coaster. It isn't scariness. I think it's going fast and wind. I think I like wind (laughs) because I I, hate that first drop. Oh yeah. I, 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 whenever I see a horror movie, the thing that sticks with me is someone thought of that. And if one person thought of that, (laughs) probably more people have thought of that. And then I, yeah, it freaks me out and I can't sleep and I have enough nightmares. I don't, I don't want, I just don't even want the images in my mind. Right. Right. It's just, I think that there's, it's there. It's, it's just not for me the way the art is is being done Mm -hmm. but i think that it does provide something for some people people you know i've done dork forests about people who love haunted houses Mm. and especially the ones that are populated and and people jump out and go boo and you know nobody's touching you but there's it's it's that jump scare i hate jumps i don't i I don't like fight or flight at all (laughs) Worst I don't know feeling. if I was raised with fight or flight. <laughs> that makes me because uh, I don't have any distinct memories <laughs> I, of, of when the flip switch was flipped. But I don't like it. Yeah, I have enough PTSD. I'm good on. That. <laughs> like I just need chamomile tea right. and nature videos. <laughs> right. Who are the unlikely friends today? Um, <laughs> I I am looking at your your list and it and this I mean because of this this is all, all that psychology stuff you were talking about there's mm. amateur psychology but you have here and I feel like this leads right into scientific explanations for spiritual ideas. Oh yeah. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? Um <laughs> I know. I know. How do you explain that? Um I guess I like to think like I'll I'll take like new age ideas like the idea of karma or something and i'm like okay, okay. well how like from a so cuz s- karma is when if if you do something bad then some someone someone will come some ba- something bad will come back at you mhm what you kind like, of, sort of the yeah. golden rule do unto others yeah but it, but opposite if if you do something bad, something bad will happen to you. That's karma. But you can have good karma Where the as hell well. did that come from? I mean, I know there's... A, oh, right, right. Yeah, and if you do something good, you get good stuff. I know there's an aspect of that in Eastern religion, but it's kind of slightly different. I think it has more to do with your thinking mind and you, like... Um, 
don't fully know how to explain it because I'm not uh, in enlightened being by any means. <laughs> <laughs> Let me but what can you just I, hold on while I get enlightened? When, like science tries to, <laughs> um, <laughs> but how does science try to explain the crystals and the and the vibrations and the and is it all the moon, you know, and you're rattling the bones and looking? Well, I think so. I there's like a couple of like uh. The, two of the big Did ideas. Did you read a book? Are, no, this was all like, I think this was back when I smoked weed, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I don't know, it stuck with me and I'm fascinated by this kind of stuff. It's like also an unstoned activity. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> sure. But um, but like, like a karma, for example, like... I like to sit down and try to think like on a science, I'm saying like a lot, I'm so sorry. Um, on a scientific level, how could karma be a thing? And then I think, okay, well, well, you know, you have to <laughs> go with me on the ride here, like assume this is all <laughs> a simulation. <laughs> so we have to start from the place that this is that. Um, then it's like a big computer program and karma could just be like an algorithm that's plugged in. And if you do this one action, then it sets off the algorithm for this other thing to happen. So, um, that's one that example. That does sound like a stoned hypothesis. <laughs> yeah. You're like, let's take scientific theory and apply it to a hippie skippy thing. And then we'll get a, maybe we'll get science out. We don't know. Like how did Newton come up with, who was was it Newton with gravity? I, I I believe it was. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm at a loss. The apple. Yeah, that uh, sounds right. Like, like why wasn't he stoned when he was like, oh, gravity, man? May have been. And it, it does feel like that, and I don't think well, why not. Maybe it. Is, I mean, the thing is, is is what is science but us trying to understand the universe, right? And if there is, and, and if if there's physics, if there's chemistry, then maybe psycho you know, sort of emotional and ideological things are also, there are also formulae. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another one I had was, um, I was really fascinated with supernovas and, um, like with supernovas, there'll be, you know, let's just say there's a supernova that happened and it's 20 million light years away. So that supernova happened 20 million years ago and we're just now seeing it. So if, with, if you had a powerful enough telescope um, and you're standing in another point in space, like every event that ever happened is still happening. So in theory, could you travel back through time by standing at a different point in space with some kind of telescope. I don't know. I am not a scientist, you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I did. Uh, this is hilarious because I do a series with uh, JPL and NASA called mm -hmm. Universe Unplugged. Mm -hmm. And the, it, the last episode I did was about supernovas. Really? And I forgot to ask them about time travel mm. because I think that that, that, that that is something that, you know, because that how how much time has passed since the of star went nova or supernova that because of the how much time how much distance and time there is it makes people think about time travel mm -hmm. about what did happen when this like we just saw it flare but it happened 20 million years ago and that was before there were any people and um so it could we somehow go back to that so i love that jpl has a, le a lecture series once i mean when back when the world was a thing like being mm -hmm. able to go in the world i don't know if you remember that i barely do but <laughs> um but they used to have a lecture series monthly i don't know maybe they're doing it online i haven't checked but i i loved going to their lecture series um oh i'm sure that they were doing it they're doing it online um you should definitely look into it. And if you want, you can go to universeunplugged.probablyorg. Universe might be unplugged. edu, might be .com. But look out for Universe Unplugged. And essentially, I just interview. It's me. It's it's a dork forest. I interview two very, very well at PhD rocket scientists. And then there's me saying things like, well, did you read Dragon Riders of Pern? And... uh <laughs> They have not, or some of them have. You should get uh, them, get them stoned, and give them some hippie theory. Right, right. Let's do some hippie theory. But 
<laughs> because I mean, what, what are the there's there's the theories that 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 if you have a rock of a certain kind, a crystal of a certain kind, first of all, charge it in the sun. <laughs> get it outside. Get to get those rays on it. Don't use a a ring light. Uh, so <laughs> everyone's using it on their Zoom calls, and um, and then you charge it in the sun, and then different things are supposed to mean different. Uh, they're supposed to affect you emotionally mm-hmm. differently. And so, what would be the scientific explanation for rose quartz making everybody feel like their heart, their that's their heart stone or whatever? Yeah, that's that's one that's one road I haven't really gone down. Like I have some <laughs> crystals around that some friends have given me, and I used you to I have not. a rock collection from when I was a kid that some of them are crystals, but I don't know how you I don't feel. Have a book? I don't yeah. have a book. No. I mean, I almost did buy some the other week because I'm like, I'll try anything right now. (laughs) (laughs) Quarantine mode. Why not crystals? Have have you been watching any of the old movies or are you watching Um, new stuff? Let's see. Lately, I think the only movie movie I watched recently was Royal Tenenbaums. Um, That's an older one. Yeah. I think that is That's with uh, Gene Hackman? Yeah. The rich man's Dabney Coleman. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, oh, he is such a perfect dick in that movie. Like the writing is so perfect. It's just, he's such a dick and it's so funny. Uh, yeah. You just met my dad. <laughs> uh, Your I dad is when I saw the Royal Tenenbaums, I was like, wow, Elliot Cation. Look at <laughs> being written perfect. Does he listen to this? Uh, he doesn't. He may. I sent him the one with Guy Branham. Uh, I don't know if you listened to that one. It was about the Mitford sisters. Mm-hmm. I cherry picked the ones I sent to him because um, he recorded. I record right after he had major heart surgery, probably six years ago now. Um, he seven years ago. He. Um, I recorded the Dork Forest with him. I wanted it to be about sales, and I've never released it because I was so full of fury. Mm. Uh, because everything is a sale to him, mm. including my mother and oh. my stepmother. Guess what? Oof. No, not happy. And so I have the recording some, and I think I was going to put it out after he passes. <laughs> but he's holding on, you guys. <laughs> uh, so he's a he's a narcissist. Um, yes. He and uh, what I like to say is that he can be forced to be thought- thoughtful. Mm. he just isn't thinking mm. about anyone else mm. and it's not that he's a bad guy he's a nice enough guy uh just if he thinks of you you know and right when he got out of the hospital from almost dying he did he actually was a lot more thoughtful and mm. he it was a lot more sort of grateful for what he had and his life it was a it was a good life scare for him mm-hmm. and then he was feeling great and then he was sort of sliding back into jackassery. Mm. And then this happened, the quarantine happened. And he has actually become um, sort of a more thoughtful guy again. Uh, he said, you ever read um, Flannery O'Connor, A Good Man is Hard to Find? Mm. It's a I don't think I have, no. It's about, um, a, a, a mer- it's a, there's a family, like, a, like a, a European vacation kind of family. Mm-hmm. Um, National Lampoon vacation kind of family who uh, they're listening to the radio and they hear that uh, a psychopathic serial killer has escaped with another inmate from a, from a, a close by prison because they were chained together mm. and then they become captured by this psychopath who kills almost, who kills everybody. Uh, spoiler alert. This was written in the fifties. Um, so the, um, but the psychopath at one point, he, the grandmother, we see in the beginning of the story that the grandmother in this story is a disaster of a person. Mm. Just a, a, the biggest, meanest jackass in the whole wide world. Nitpicky, hurtful of absolutely the parents, the children, everybody. And the psychopath kills her last. Mm. And his buddy, his, his co-inmate, goes... Why didn't we kill her first? <laughs> and uh, after she's dead, and the psychopath says the most amazing thing. He says, 
she wasn't that bad. She would have been all right if there would have been someone there to kill her every single day of her life. Oh, my God. Which is, I think, true of many of us. That's an interesting um, remake of Groundhog's Day as well. (laughs) (laughs) Being killed every day of your life. (laughs) Right. It took him. But what he found was that he couldn't die, right? Yeah. And well, uh, he kept having to come back. You know, like there's a lot of Buddhist theory around it about like reincarnation until you get it right and you're in the present moment. And but like to take this darker path where it's like you have to get murdered every day and keep coming back to get (laughs) to that point. Um, Right. Like literally. So Bill Murray is being bored to death every single day until he he realizes what he can be grateful for. Mm hmm. As opposed to being murdered every single, threatened to, to be murdered every day to realize that maybe life is precious. Yeah, I guess it, different things for different strokes for different folks. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. And a different sort of a, a different vibe as to where, how you would, how you would process that. mm I mean, would you prefer to live every the same day over and over again, or to be threatened with murder every single day? <laughs> Depends which day you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking today. What about this day? Would you want to live this day for ten thousand years? Oh, ten years? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I, I'd take it over the murder. I don't know. Quarantine <laughs> quarantine day is a hard day to want to relive. You know. I don't know. Right. Well, I did. I did have a friend of mine tell me. She said, you know, about these quarantine days is that it feels like every day is the same day. Yeah. And I said to her, "Don't you have small children?" And she's like, "Yeah." And I said, "In the last six weeks, aren't they taller?" And she goes, "Yeah, they've actually grown." And I said, "And one of them can almost read now." And she goes, "Yeah." And I said, "Every day isn't the same, <laughs> even even in quarantine, even if." Like, you're in the same room, you know? I mean, I don't know if that's a realization that people in prisons have. Mm. You know, one of the first episodes of The Dork Forest I did was with uh, Robin Ryan, I believe uh, is her last name. Comic, uh, um, open micer and comic from Flappers, who had to move because she works in the prison system. Wow. And we were talking about prisoners. And... The comparison, like a lot of people feel like they are in a prison, right? Because they can't go out and they and they're and they don't know how to do with what they have, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's that the lesson. I don't know what this lesson, this Groundhog Day lesson is, you know, because every day Bill Murray changed it a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. People, like the same things happen. But his his circle kind of expanded. Like yeah. initially, the first creepy thing he did was he punched his brother on the steps. Right, the guy who played uh, <laughs> Brian that, that Doyle guy Murray. Who plays that guy. Yeah, yeah, I think that was his brother, right? Yeah, the actor. And then he kisses the landlady, and then he drives on the railroad tracks, and he's like, he's just trying to change something in the day. Mm-hmm. And that it takes him 10,000 days or 10 years to realize the things you should be doing is learning piano. Yeah. And being of service to people. And I being think. of service. Yeah. But that's and catching that kid. That's the hard one in, uh, in quarantine is like not being able to be of service to people and being so isolated and having it be so much about self and not being able to get out of self. Um, I think that's the, that's a hard part I struggle with. I assume other people are probably having that as well. Um, yeah, I think so. And I yeah. and I think that it's to some extent it, that too is an illusion, right? Mm-hmm. It's the illusion that the only thing you can do is think about yourself mm-hmm. when that's not actually true. Like you're a comic and a writer and uh, a, you make sketches and you make small films and stuff like that and you're trying to make bigger films but the uh the work that you can do for other people is get them out of their heads Mm -hmm. so that that is i genuinely do think that's being of service i mean it's not you know like uh there's a guy steve young a comic from la who lives in arizona now who works at trader joe's he's an essential worker 
And so he feels more useful than I do mm. with doing a podcast or doing stand-up comedy online. I, it feels slightly selfish to talk about, you know, Groundhog Day and bringing a baby and <laughs> and crystals and the moon. <laughs> When I should be telling people how we should, but I don't know how to fix social distancing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know how to fix the virus. I don't know when I'm allowed to hug strangers again after shows. Uh, <laughs> so the only thing, the only way I can be of service is to use the tools that I have. Right. And Bill Murray could catch that kid. Yeah. He ended up wandering around that town so many times. He was like, okay, there's the old guy who's going to die. I can make sure he has a good last meal. Mm-hmm. What were the things that, oh, he saved, he saved that kid. Mm-hmm. He gave $1,000 to the piano teacher every day. Yeah. He saved the guy from choking. Oh, right. Right, the Heimlich. Yeah. <laughs> lit, lit the cigarette on the way out. Um, <laughs> right. He gave the wrestling tickets. Wrestling to the- tickets to the married couple the couple yeah and i guess talked one of them into <laughs> getting married. Into marrying the other one yeah. or something yeah it was a chiropractor yeah was, did someone call him a chiropractor the interesting thing with that movie to me is like i mean there's several things but like there's different versions of being in the moment right and I think about that with, with comedy, too. Like, it's all about intention. Like, what you're saying, like, you can use comedy to be of service. Um, and you can use comedy to just, like, serve your ego and, and need that to have some hole in you filled. Um, and I've seen, like, both things. And sometimes, like, I have both things inside of me. But, like, with Groundhog's right. Day, like, there's this very, like, hedonistic version of him that... He's like in the moment because he's a hedonist and he's like, take what I can get. But then on the flip side of it, there's this more like enlightened, connected, spiritual version of him that is like of service to the people around him. And he's in the moment. And it's yeah. like two ends both, of the. And in both cases, he is in the moment. Yeah. You know, when he's stealing that money, when he's when he's sleeping his way through that tiny town and having <laughs> sex with different like that woman at the diner oh, God. Uh, that he clearly date raped. <laughs> there are questionable things, yeah. Oh my not even questionable, just horrible. But uh and then, you know, sort of the I mean the growth that he had to go through is the growth I think that we all, I mean, the reason that movie is so great is that it, it mimics the growth we all have to go through. Mm-hmm. And he did it in a way that is weirdly paralleled to what we're kind of living through, right? Mm-hmm. We do, some, some days I do think it's the same fucking day. Or what day is it? Or what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do now? Yeah. Right? What is going to, and then I start projecting into this future of like, what about September? You're like, guess what? It isn't September. Uh, And there's nothing, I can't make September be different today. Mm -hmm. So I have to, (laughs) and that's what Groundhog Day is, is I, is reminding me that I have to live in this Monday. It is Monday, May 11th. That is the day it is. Mm-hmm. And so if I could be, I got a friend of mine, she would like some oranges. I'm going to, and uh, Andy cut my hair today. We, it feels a little thin in the back. Uh, we'll, uh, it the front looks feels, great. <laughs> it looks fine in the front. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all anybody's seeing me except him. So, <laughs> and he did it. So I think he'll, he'll. <laughs> Um, it's so hilarious, though, that it it is like Groundhog Day is the same thing as that sort of amateur psychology and the scientific explanations of spiritual ideas and like your whole list. You also had uh, art. What does that mean? Uh, just uh, art. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> No happy trees. <laughs> <Just art. laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, 
I've been you like paint- art? Yeah, I went to I actually went to art school. Um and I've been getting back for to fine, it for a fine art degree? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um and I think I kind of veered off a little bit over the years from doing it. Um just because I what didn't was your have medium? space or time. Um I did several different things like drawings and paintings, but recently I got back to some oil painting. Um yeah. That's neat. Yeah. My dad paints with uh, acrylics, I think. Yeah. And uh, a fan, a guy named uh, Stu Greenberg, said, hey, I'll get, because I did a tour of my father's paintings. He said, I'll give you, I'll give your dad a hundred bucks if he paints me a Batman. And I was <laughs> like, and so I just told my dad that as a joke, because I didn't know if my dad would want to paint a Batman. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know if this guy really would pay a hundred dollars for a Batman that my dad drew. And three days later, my dad goes, hey, I drove the Batman. I painted that Batman. (laughs) And I was like, find someone with a smartphone, Captain Flip Phone, and uh, send me a picture of it. And I'll send it to him and ask him if he will give you $100. (laughs) And that was months ago. And my dad sent it. And he said, I'm not going to because uh, I could just paint it again. Get this. The post office, who has lost nothing in 30 years, lost the painting. No. So he had to paint another Batman. Oh, my God. And then this painting has been lost for three weeks. Supposedly, Stu got it today. today. Whoa. What did he mm-hmm. think? Was he happy? Well, he's put, it, he's put it in quarantine. He's the kind of person who doesn't right. open his mail for a couple of days. I do that. Which I, I've, I've thought about that. Yeah. I and hate I mail anyway. <laughs> what? I, I hate, hate mail that. anyway. I used to have a, a suitcase. God, speaking of being in the moment, I was... <laughs> some period i think this is in the weed days <laughs> when i was like i don't want to have to take up space in my mind with things that are not here and now right in this moment and i just had suitcases full of unopened mail <laughs> i have gone through and opened that years ago i did deal with and, that and but recycled all of that paper yeah that's great but i probably- 98% junk mail. It, it was. And several things that were real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard part when you find those things and you're like, oh, I probably should have dealt that's with that. That's why when I look at them, I'm like, I know I donated to you, but you aren't real. Uh, <laughs> you're gone. It's, uh, it's, I will, when I donate again, it'll happen. I wish they would all just stop. Send, it seems like a waste of money. Yeah. Just ask me for another hundred bucks. So. Yeah. Pamela Walt, you should know this. It's been an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. That flew by. Yeah. It is. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, we we t- I, you have one. More, well, there's one more topic. You said health food. Are you eating healthily in this quarantine? I actually am. I hoarded at the very beginning. I hoarded vegetables <laughs> and very little. Uh, no fresh. <laughs> it's been five weeks. How are you? I uh, I get a Whole Foods delivery. Um, oh, okay. Of fresh and, vegetables? Yeah. Do yeah. they have, like, a plan? No. I just Oh, you just order sit, fresh vegetables? I just sit and refresh till they deliver. <laughs> what, what vegetables do you enjoy? Um, I like most vegetables, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Pretty much anything. Um, except peas. Anything except peas. You don't like an English pea? No. Get out of here. Don't like them. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Allow me to name some vegetables and tell me what you're doing. Are you cooking them? I I, them raw. Both. Uh, I'm doing both. I've been making a lot of Indian food and um, soups because it's been 100 degrees. (laughs) And you're like, I want soup. Yeah. What? uh, I just made a lentil and barley vegetable soup Ooh. myself. Whoa. And then uh, I ruined it by throwing in uh, most of a chicken. Mm. But it was also, it's also delicious. Mm. And I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm thinking of eating that for lunch after this particular program is over. Is there a favorite, do you do anything cooking wise to a vegetable that you're proud of? A cauliflower, a zook, a bell pepper, mm. a broccoli, uh, a squash, a spinach. Uh, uh, what about I don't know salad? Do you make a salad? I make a salad. Yeah, really. <laughs> you make a, to... a raw salad? Yeah, with lettuces? Yeah. 
Do you like a lettuce? It's all right. <laughs> it's a filler food, a lettuce really is. Yeah, I sometimes eat around it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I don't like lettuce that much. Um, I like an arugula or a spinach. Sure. Yeah. A watercress. I like a watercress. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Regular, like, I grew up in the Midwest, and it, I didn't know salads could be anything other than iceberg lettuce. Uh, yeah. I remember when I learned that. I grew up in Wisconsin. Where did you grow up? Illinois. Where? In, in uh, near Chicago land? Uh, Aurora. Uh, Chicago land. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's uh, there's terrible work being done with salads. In yeah, Wisconsin and vegetables. I th- putting cheese on everything. Yeah, <laughs> cheese and ranch dressing <laughs> and gravy, and you're just like, why'd you stop it? I think that was my why'd weird you- way of rebelling was that I got really into health food. Um, yeah. How do you define it? Are you a vegetarian or a vegan or a I- raw foodie or a keto or a paleo? I actually I turned vegetarian when I was fourteen. And then a few years back, I started eating salmon um, because I wasn't getting enough protein. And now recently I was eating fish and I was like, you know, I don't think I can do this anymore. So I don't know what I am at the moment. but um, Not at the moment. Yeah. But I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I I think now you know how to course correct for more proteins Mm -hmm. than when you first become a vegetarian. and, And then all of a sudden you're like, why am I so tired? Yeah. I would, I would, I was a vegetarian, but I would eat like a bag of candy and French fries. And that was my day. <laughs> yeah. How healthy. Yeah. And fair enough. Pamela Walt, everybody, by the go, by the way, uh, on Twitter, it's house of Pam cakes. And then it is <laughs> Pam, Pamela Demick. What is it? Pam Demick, Pam dot Demick. Pan.demic on Instagram and it's <laughs> PamelaWalt.com needs to be updated. Yeah. But uh, we believe in <laughs> Pamela Walt because uh, you are hilarious. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so it, much for having me. It was quick. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. And you know the rules out there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, take care of each other. Okay. So I'm going to stop recording there. Okay. I'm going to. Well, my hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?